Welcome fellow homo sapiens to another episode of Gender Bender, a podcast where we debunk myths, fill your head with knowledge and make you question everything. My name is Jules. And I'm Flynn. And on today's podcast, we'll be discussing sex, the biological construct. We would first like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land of which we are recording on today and pay our respect to the elders past, present and emerging in hopes of reconciliation. And just before we start exploding your brains with information, we would like to put out a sensitivity warning. As always, we'll be discussing potentially sensitive topics in this podcast, and it can be confronting for some people. So, today we're discussing sex, not the physical act, but the biological construct created by society. I would like to point out that gender and sex are two very different things, and we'll be discussing that on the next episode. I thought this discussion is very relevant as we have the voting season coming up, therefore we're going to get asked that weird question of what sex we identify as within these socially constructed binary tick boxes of female and male. So society views sex as binary, meaning there are strictly two sides, which are male or female, as said, with no layover. Binary sex actually gets determined as early as 14 weeks in the womb, and it's determined by a doctor through an ultrasound, as this is the time they can distinguish between the vulvula and the penis. Therefore, sex is often determined by what sex organs, or your plumbing, to be. To put it bluntly, those with penises and related such organs are male, and those with vaginas and related such organs are female. These sex organs are determined by chromosomes, which are buried within your DNA. Females typically have the XX chromosome, and males have the XY chromosome. Further to the point, male and female can further be categorised into this binary based on the hormones that they have present such as males having higher testosterone levels and females having high estrogen and progesterone levels. As a result of all these, society generally identifies sex as a biologically constructed thing, which classifies you as one of the two binary sexes based on your genetics, organs and hormones. However, there are other sexes that undergo the term of intersex. This is a person who was born with a reproductive or sexual anatomy that does not fit into the social binary boxes of female and male. A perfect example is Casta Semenya. She was assigned female at birth due to her having female associated organs, but she also has the XY chromosomes, Mm. which results in her creating naturally elevated testosterone levels caused by the presence of these internal testes. Unfortunately, she's labelled as an abnormality when in fact she just doesn't fit into the binary boxes of society. As a result, of her high testosterone level, she can outperform her fellow female competitors, some labelling it as a disadvantage to them. Now, we had this discussion the other day about Casta competing in sports as to whether it was a disadvantage to other players or not. Um, Both our opinions concluded that elite athletes perform and play in sports because they are generally the best in that sport. Now, Mm -hmm. sport itself is defined as an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another. Um, Therefore, the person who performs the best wins. We discussed the fact that literally every player within sports will have different levels of hormones and abilities, but just because an athlete has a slight advantage over another does not make it unfair. It just means that being in a competition, that person is in fact better in performing that sport. So as a result, we came to the conclusion ourselves that Casta is just an athlete who has got a slight advantage, and as a result, she's better in in her competitive sport, and she deserves to win. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. So now that we have explained uh, how society labels us all into the binary categories, well, we shall now debunk some myths. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so our first myth is that males are stronger than females. Now, in this part, we will be talking about females and males in the ludicrous societal binary versions. So although this myth is mostly true, there is some lie to it. In fact, all humans from the age of 12 and below have the same capacity to form the same amount of strength. However, after 12 is when adolescents hit puberty and hormones can begin to interrupt that equality. Nevertheless, it doesn't actually mean that females are weaker than males post-puberty, but more of whoever has the high testosterone is generally stronger. Therefore, as males generally, as a generalisation, produce more testosterone than females, they can produce more power. This then reinstates that myth and makes people believe so. However, as we have spoken, females can actually produce produce more testosterone than other females and sometimes even more than males, so therefore debunking the myth completely. Yeah, myth, myth alert. So our second myth is that hormones are different in men and women. Again, although this is slightly true, as spoken again, females have testosterone and males have estrogen, just at slightly different levels and even within the two binary sexes themselves, there are different varying levels of all of these hormones, therefore debunking again the fact that this sex is binary. 
To sum up for today's episode, we would like to point out that society has generated a binary sex system that labels humans into the female or male category based on genes, chromosomes and hormones, without even any consideration that each and every human has slightly varying aspects of all those classifying features and we as different individuals should stop classifying each other as such. If today's episode has left you with any questions, please read the article Let's Talk About Biological Sex by Irene Miguel Aliga to read up more on biological sex. If this episode has left you feeling uneasy with your feelings, please visit Lifeline Australian and speak to a consultant. All will be linked in the description below. And before we leave, we always like to end our episodes with a fun fact. And this episode's fun fact is, did you know that both female and male hyenas have testes and a penis? Ooh. Ooh. All right, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.